Hey guys, my name is Shubham Kejriwal and today in this video, I would be talking to you guys about interstellar as well as intergalactic magnetic fields. So there exists a very very small amount of magnetic field in interstellar as well as intergalactic space and I was asked a question by Nandini Jha regarding the consequences of the presence of such a magnetic field. This was posted to me as a question in the previous video, the Q&A that I made along with a few other questions that I plan to be answering through other videos. In case you would be interested in such topics, do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so that I know that you guys like watching such videos. I decided to go one step ahead and give you a brief history and description of all the research that has been going around from 1982 on the subject. I conducted a whole lot of research and hopefully would be able to give you guys information about some of these astrophysical phenomena which at least I find really really interesting. First of all, let's talk about the ways of detection of such magnetic fields. The most prominent way of detection of magnetic fields in interstellar space is through the analysis of polarized ionized interstellar dust cloud. So in our galaxy, like many other spiral galaxies, there exist different dust clouds which could be made out of supernova remnants, which could be nebulae or anything else for that matter. These contains of very small particles which can at times be charged. When they are charged, it is called an ionized interstellar dust cloud. Now when these charged particles are present inside a magnetic field, due to the magnetic field, they get polarized in a certain direction. Now if unpolarized light from a background star passes through this polarized interstellar dust cloud, it also gets polarized. When telescopes receive this polarized starlight which pass through the interstellar medium, we can tell a lot about the characteristics about the interstellar cloud as well as the magnetic field inside of which it exists. Now specifically in the galactic center region, there is a certain presence of long filament like structures called non-thermal radio filaments. As the name suggests, they do not have thermal properties but specifically illuminate in the radio frequencies. It is predicted that these non-thermal radio filaments are present in zones of extreme magnetic fields of up to 1 milligauss in the central galactic region. The mere presence of such non-thermal radio filaments in the galactic center tells a lot about the presence of magnetic field in the center. They seem to have magnetic field strengths of about 1 milligauss, which scale to the parsec long size of these radio filaments contains energy equivalent to that of 3000 to 4000 supernova remnants. That is a lot of energy. Anyways, those are two of the most prominent evidence of a presence of a magnetic field in interstellar space. Except for that, the Planck satellite has already mapped the entire magnetic field of our galaxy as well as the surrounding galactic region. Now let us talk about where exactly these magnetic fields originate from. There are hypotheses regarding a seed magnetic field, a very small amount of magnetic field generated through different processes that we would be talking about, which can later be amplified and maintained through dynamos. One of the hypotheses suggests that during the electroweak phase transition of the universe or during the quark hadron field transition phase of the universe, these magnetic fields could have originated. Now because of the intense cosmology related to this topic, I would rather not go into the details of it for the sake of this video. And I don't think I myself understand the whole thing completely. There would be links to the research papers which would talk more about these transition phases in the description down below so in case you are interested you can always take a look. There are also hypotheses of origins of the magnetic field during the inflation period of the universe. This was one phase in the evolution of the universe during which it expanded at very rapid speeds and a lot of changes took place in the universe explaining its current condition. Now to understand this you would have to know that each of the four forces that we now know of the electromagnetic force, the strong force, the weak force as well as the gravitational force have their own field according to the standard model of the universe. Now thanks to quantum mechanics each of these fields would have certain quantum fluctuations related to them. What is hypothesized is that during the inflation period the quantum fluctuation of the electromagnetic field amplified once the universe reheated the electric field fluctuations damped to zero, however the magnetic field fluctuations were frozen into the intergalactic plasma. Now this majorly concerns with the magnetic field generation in the whole of the universe. However, in interstellar magnetic field generations, there are other processes involved. One major hypothesis is through batteries. Now different particles floating around in spiral galaxies 
have certain charges linked to them. However, because the total number of charges in a galaxy is approximately the same, these charges cancel out and the whole galaxy is in turn neutral. However, one interesting aspect of this is the fact that the positive as well as the negative charges carry different masses. Electron has a different mass compared to proton. As a consequence, if pressure is applied onto these particles, they would accelerate at different relative rates. And this, in fact, can give birth to a magnetic field. One important example of batteries that are used to explain a lot of processes that go around in an interstellar medium are called Biermann batteries. Again, more information about this would be in the description. Another method of origin for magnetic field in the interstellar space is through stars and active galactic nuclei. The dynamos present inside of these stars and agents can eject magnetic field into interstellar space which can be very very high strength however short lived. That is by the way a general trend in interstellar magnetic field. They are relatively high in strength of up to a few nanogauss but are short lived. However for the origins of intergalactic magnetic fields they are very very minute in amount even smaller than a few nanogauss however they are much long lived. Now once this magnetic field is generated, there is need for maintaining and amplifying this magnetic field. And one of the most prominent hypotheses regarding this process is through turbulent dynamos. These are random turbulent motions of stars and galaxy systems which amplify and maintain seed magnetic fields that we just talked about. The two major types of turbulent dynamos are large scale as well as small scale dynamos. These are also known as fluctuation and mean field dynamos respectively but we would use the more convenient naming scheme. The large scale dynamos are the one in which the scale of the dynamo is much greater than the turbulent motion that produced it. And the vice versa takes place in small scale dynamos where the scale of the dynamo is smaller than the scale of the turbulent flow that generated it. Remember the non-thermal radio filaments that we just talked about? The observations of these non-thermal radio filaments suggest that they have magnetic fields of strength equivalent to about 1 milligauss or higher. However, other studies of the same region suggest that the fields there could not in any case be greater than 1 microgauss. That's a difference of a factor of about 1000. And so there's a major controversy in the field strength of magnetic field in the galactic center where these non-thermal radio filaments are mostly present. However, it is hypothesized that both types of the dynamos that we just talked about, the large scale and the small scale dynamos, can ensure that these non-thermal radio filaments can exist in certain regions and the other regions can have a much weaker magnetic field. Now the small scale dynamos can produce fields which are very strong but act on a very small region. Those could be the regions in which these non-thermal radio filaments are present. However, on a larger scale, the large scale dynamos can come into play which are much weaker in strength but again are spread across a very large area. And so the problem of NRFs is solved. Not really, there are still discrepancies in how exactly that works because it doesn't really match exactly with what the theoretical predictions are and what we observe them to be. But again, that's space for you. And now finally, after talking about all of this, let's talk about the consequences of the presence of magnetic fields in interstellar as well as intergalactic regions. So the consequence of magnetic field could be taken up in different perspectives. If you talk about Earth, the planet itself has a very very strong magnetic field compared to the magnetic field of intergalactic or even interstellar regions. It has a magnetic field which is at least about a hundred thousand times stronger than the interstellar or the intergalactic magnetic field and so I don't think that it can have a very major significance onto Earth or the people living inside of it. However, if we see the consequence of having a magnetic field elsewhere, we see a lot of interesting astrophysics happening. For example, in the galactic center region, we see structures like non-thermal radio filaments that we briefly talked about in this video which tell us a lot about how material evolves in the presence of magnetic field in the galactic center. Except for that, the presence of magnetic field and the polarized interstellar gas can also tell us more about the structure of this interstellar gas and can help us study supernova remnants or interstellar dust in a much nicer way. This can then help us understand stellar evolution and star explosions in a much better way than we currently know of. This is a very recent field if you ask me with interest rising only from 1982 after many discrepancies were found. Anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. I talked to you guys about a whole lot of stuff regarding intergalactic and interstellar space. I hope you guys found it interesting. 
I found it really exciting and interesting to be able to go through all those research papers and you know take a look at all the stuff that people have been talking about about these type of magnetic fields. But well yeah that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Hit the thumbs up button if you did subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of such content. And well yeah that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Shubham Kejriwal and I'll catch you guys in the next one.